Right, in the previous video, there's one thing that I forgot to do uh, before uh, connecting all these, uh, merging all these textures. There's one thing I, I usually like to do, and it's polygrouping this stuff before I connect it up. So I'm just going to select each one of them and press Ctrl W so that if I want to come back to this tool, I'm just going to each one and press Ctrl W. So if I want to connect, uh, come back to this tool, it's easier um, you with polygroups because then when it's merged, now if I merge all this stuff down like I did in the previous video, uh, like UV, merge down, merge down. If I want to come back to it and let's turn poly paint off. I can now easily go through the different uh, pieces, okay? And I can even come here and go to split and do a group split and I'll have um, the structure that I had in the, in the beginning. So now that I only have one sub tool, I can grab this name and name this guy as IV pole and delete that guy and I can save this subtool instead of saving the project because saving the project is it's gonna give you a bigger format so I'm just gonna uh, create this IV pole here in my computer and save it as a Z, Z tool okay save right I could that's done and, and now I can press go Z and let's go into Maya okay so there's my IV pole, if I press F, there's my IV pole. And right away, I'd like to now get the right measurement for it. So I'm just gonna go into uh, the internet and look at how high is one of these guys. And item height, uh, let's look for one that actually gives me the height of the element. And okay, we have here pulleys height adjustable, blah, blah, blah. And it's one meter, 17 centimeters. And that's the smallest size. So yeah, let's do one meter, 20 centimeters. Okay, so how do we do this in Maya? So if I press the space bar and I'll just uh, over this and go into a focus here, press space bar here. And so I'm on our orthographic view. I can come down to my display and uh, is it display or is it create? Is it, it's create measurement tools and I go to a distance tool. So I can click here to create one locator and then click here to create another locator. And if I go into my move and I'll select my second locator and I can just adjust this so it's a straight line and is the 1000 <laughs> 1000 meters well that's a bit of a giant one isn't it okay this is in centimeters if I'm not wrong so 120 should be the size of my tool of my IV pole. Okay, so let's scale that down to 120 then. Whoop. Okay. And I'll just press F to focus on that. And I'll just bring this guy over here. Okay, that's 120. Okay, I'll select my object here and make it 120 approximately. Right, that's good enough. We don't need exact measurements. Like I said, this is for a game. And now we got the right size. So if I go back into my perspective view, I can do a go Z here. No mesh. Okay, this mesh. A go Z. And in here, now we got the right size inside of ZBrush as well. So I'll save uh, my tool again. Save as IV pulled. Oh, there's an underscore there now. Okay. Right. I'll just delete the other one from the folder and we're off and set to go. 
Right, in Maya, let's take care of these UVs now. So I used GoZ and this is, there's many, several different ways you can work. I, I combined every mesh, all the meshes inside of ZBrush and I exported it to Maya. Now you could keep everything separate and bring it into Maya and you could work in object mode and just select each part separately and work on on their UV separately. You can also right shift, right click, go into UV and select UV shell and now you can click the different UVs, uh, UV shells that you want. If I go into my UV editor, thing with that is that even though you selected the UV, right, they're all on top of each other, you can see. You selected the UV, you can grab this UV and take it out of the way, okay, and then uh, start uh, uh, placing this how you want it and whatnot. And you can also come into your modeling toolkit and you can do um, select your model, make sure you're in object mode, select your model and do a separate. Now when you do separate, you get all these different poly uh, surfaces and they are the poly surfaces that we had in ZBrush. Now you notice that's a lot more than what we had in ZBrush because it separated the wheels as well and it's separated by UVs. Okay, so each one that has a UV, I believe, as you can see here, all the wheels are selected, right? Okay, so I'm actually gonna work like this and I bet I uh, might as well start with the wheels. So everything that looks like that. Uh, okay, so. And of course you can also go into object mode and select all these guys like that. Right, and now I can uh, either combine these, these guys Let's combine them and they all want UV right there so I'll do the same for the wheels this is just the way I work it doesn't mean that you have to work in the same way you can find your own way of uh, doing uh, what needs to be done no not separate combine okay thank you and now I just need to do that bit there, these little guys here. So, and I, I believe they're... There are these guys, these one. Okay, I just paused the video to do those little bits there. And now, because I've combined them, all of this stuff as no UVs is gone so I believe I can no I cannot delete it right but they're there okay now the other bits are already separate so these guys all right so now I can just click on what I want to uh, move around in my UV space and move it around in my UV space Okay, so I start with this and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use Udims here just for the time being and let me just uh, go into UV here and start moving this stuff away and put it in different Udim spaces so that they're not all on top of each other. And I'll pause the video, this is boring. Okay, so now my object is all separate. Uh, in I separated everything. And <coughs> pardon. And if I just go into UV here, I'll select this guy. I just want to show you that, for example, this guy is all the wheels. This guy is all the, the brakes. And I think these guys are the wheels, is it? Yeah, okay. Right, so now that we have this, we just have to rearrange all this stuff. And 
I'm not really happy <laughs> on how uh, ZBrush unwrapped this bit. Uh, the other ones, well, actually, let's look at distortion first, right? So if I turn on this guy here and I look at distortion, I can see that some of this stuff is really distorted. So the red areas are the distorted stuff. So I might be unwrapping some of this stuff again. Like this guy, for example, the handle, the screw handle here. If I press F just to focus this, the screw handle is has quite a bit of distortion right there. And so I will we'll unwrap this guy in a different way. So I'm going to just unwrap this guy and while I'm recording so that I and then I might unwrap the wheels here as well uh, but I'll just unwrap these guys so that this is is not a boring long video okay guys okay like like I said before I like to use the UV cut and sew tool so we only have one cut and that's that cut right there that you can see. So I'm going to go into my UV cut and sew tool. And if I open up my UV toolkit here, um, let me just adjust this. I, I can select edges really easily like that. And now if I press control and double click that, I'll remove uh, those edges. If you can't remove edges like it's happening to me right now, is, uh, something uh, is happening there, it doesn't let me remove edges, I can just go into, uh, go back to, to select mode, object mode, click just this guy, that's the only one I really want to work on, and do a planer. <clears throat> and as I do a planer, now the cuts are gone. And I'm sure I don't have any cuts in there and I can start doing my own cuts. So I go to my UV tool and I have an edge uh, shortcut right there. So how are we going to uh, do this? I think I'll do a cut there. And, and one there. I'm not very good at doing this. I, I have to advise you right away. I'm not very good at uh, creating seams for UVs, uh, but um, but I wanted to remind you, okay, remind you that the more cuts you have, the more vertex count you'll have in um, in your 3D, well, in your engine. Just cut there, please. Okay, so I'm control clicking and dragging. Okay, let's see what that's gonna give us. So if I go in into UV and if you right click, uh, I can't remember how to do that, how to go there. But if I press UVs here, oh yeah, so it's these little box here. And I hover this or I select this and press D. That's gonna unwrap. And that was a poor unwrap. That's terrible because one side is huge and the other one, it's really tiny. So I'm gonna try and just do it uh, the following way. Boom. Boom. Okay, and then I'll probably do a cut down here. Boom. And see how that goes. Right. D. Okay. So, this bit is not going to be as visible as this bit right here. Uh, and I do have a bit of crappy geometry right here. This is should okay, yeah. It's a bit crappy guys, but I think it will do. So the the actually the part that is small is the part that I want to be big. And and that's a terrible cut right there. 
got to turn there. So we don't want that. That's overlapping. If I just zoom in, it's overlapping on its on itself. Sometimes I just get lazy, and what I'll do is I come in and say automatic, and boom, <laughs> it's done for me, right? Uh, I don't have to worry about anything else. But the more cuts you have, the more vertex you have. So I. Now that I have automatic there, I, I'm going to go in and I'm going to get rid of some of these edges and see what's going to happen and if I can have uh, a better unwrap with less cuts. Okay, so let's unwrap this again. I'll press UV and this is the way I do it, but there's, there's another way here. Uh, on uh, the unfold option right so basically what we want to get to is that these little squares kind of match up in size from one to the other so that when we're texturing it um, you don't have one part with a lot of resolution and one part with very tiny resolution but we also have to keep in mind that some parts like these uh, and just click here and okay so this guy which is this guy right here and I'll just go into this tool this guy is gonna be uh, pointing there and our model probably not gonna see that guy very often and I was gonna make it smaller but Actually, now I realize that you might end up seeing it. So, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. And now I can come in and orient UVs. Uh, so there's a lot of great tools on the UV toolkit. I'm not going to go over all of them. But uh, you can use it. You can come here to arrange in layout. And you can do a orient shells for these guys and you can obviously you can rotate them around scale them and do whatever you want to them i like to orient them okay so yeah we have a lot of cuts you can do a lot better than this if you take the time to do it and now i'm not going to scale these well, I can actually. This is just one piece, so I, I can scale this. And you can see the type of texture space you're going to have as you scale them down. Right? We need a lot of space for all the other parts, so I don't want to uh, give them too much space. <clears throat> so I'll just place them on the corner there for now, and I'll keep um, working on the others. So I just unpaused the video to show you something here and yeah, yeah you can see that this is pretty crappy I have to fix that but I wanted to show you that this one and this one they're very similar so we can actually use one on top of the other if we don't mind having symmetry here when you're texturing this so uh, we can stack shells so if I click this one and shift click that one and stack shells now uh, we're saving some UV space there as well. Okay, so I'm just going to pause the video and keep doing this. One thing I should mention is that now when you're texturing this in some Painter, let's say if I start painting this guy, now this guy is going to get painted in the same place. Okay, so you have to keep that in mind. Just wanted to show you that uh, for for example, cylindrical shapes like this, you can see that ZBrush does this to them. And here in Maya, you can simply select cylindrical and you get something terrible. <laughs> but either way, I was trying to uh, let you know that you can try this stuff. For example, spherical in this case seems to work a bit better. <clears throat> Uh, still some distortion in some of these guys so I might as well go with ZBrush so just to show you that 
Oh, and of course, uh, you can always try to use uh, straighten UVs here and see what result you get from that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Another thing I wanted to point out is, for example, the, the wheels, they're all uh, with this distortion here. So what I can do is going into my modeling kit, I can separate them and so I'll separate them and then I'll work on just one of them, uh, unwrap that and then I can copy the UVs from this guy onto the other guys. Okay, so I created the UV for this wheel and now if I shift click on that guy and I'm not sure if I can do this on multiple objects. I'm going to try. If you go into Mesh and you open up Transfer Attributes, no, you can't do it for multiple ones, but you can do for one. So if I click on this guy, shift click on that one, and using these settings, I press Apply. Now that guy has the same UV space as this one. And I can just repeat the process for the other ones. Okay, now they all share the same UV space now. I'll just combine them again. Okay. Okay, now that everything is properly UV'd, well, could be better. I mean, <laughs> I can select the whole object in object mode, come up here and start rearranging these guys. So in my UV toolkit, if I select UV shell or I click right click and go to UV shell here, I can select these guys and start rearranging them and resizing them. Okay, so I want to look at the texture and I'm going to try and make it. Okay, so small things usually need a bit more texture space. I don't want anything to be, let's say, have too much texture than other stuff. That doesn't look too good. I could, could have done a better job there. Um, Okay, these guys, are these not combined? No, oh, they are, they're just different UV shells. I have UV shells selected here. Okay, so the wheels uh, could be a bit smaller as well. So I think these is the wheels. And these is the wheels. That bit there as well. I just hover it. Okay, and this is. So I can make that a bit smaller, I guess. And, and basically, I'm trying to. Rearrange this in the UV space. That's all I'm trying to do. Right. Okay. So this guy can keep his size. Now, if you if I press this, I want to make sure that everything is inside of this UV space. Because if I use a little bit, go off it and that turns on it means that I'm using another UDIM and it's gonna show up as two UDIMs inside of Substance Painter and I don't want that to happen okay bring this down and I'm just gonna rearrange this until I get it in a good square and I'll be back in a sec okay so I rearranged them and this is the result I got and I'm happy with that so we got uh, compared to the what the ZBrush had done for when we tried it on the other video to unwrap everything in ZBrush. Uh, this is a much better result, and you can use a, and this use makes uses of uh, a lot more texture space. 
And now we're ready to combine these textures up, uh, these objects up. So if I go into object mode and I'll select these guys and I'll do a, in my modeling toolkit, a combine. Okay, poly surface, and I'll call this my IV pull. And I'll come to I'll save this and come here, export selection. And I use smoothing groups, tensions and binormals, smooth mesh. That's fine, that's all good. And I'll export selection as an FBX file IV underscore pull export selection. Now we can go into Substance Painter which is saving at the moment even though I don't want it to. Close that saving please. Okay and we say new we select our mesh and I got it in here IV pole IV pole. Oh and I forgot to do something that I usually do here in Maya and that is coming here to set normal and let's see if I remember what this is uh, mesh display okay so set normal set vertex normal and I just hide my UV here okay object mode so mesh display uh, set vertex normal set to face mesh display and soften edge okay so that all the vertices are softened uh, soft so select my IV pool and there's the IV Paul Lambert and whatever name this has is the name for your texture set. So I, if I say TS for texture set, this is the name is going to show up in um, Substance Painter. Okay, and export that. Well, select it in Substance Painter again. Let's go new. Select our IV pull. Let's do a 2K texture for this. Uh, direct X because it's going to be Unreal. And discard the previous changes. <coughs> and if it all goes well, we should have something like this. There's our single UV uh, map, the UV set. There's the name that I was mentioning. And let's clear these er previous errors. Okay, and press F2. Uh, there's our mesh. Okay, so it looks good. Everything looks fine. I hope I didn't lose my vertex uh, color and I'm gonna find out now when I bake it. So if I go into bake mesh maps, uh, we're gonna go 2k like we said. I'll press this because I'm not using an eye poly and I'll come here and I usually use a subsampling of either 2x2 two two or 4x4. Four four. This is just gonna uh, use anti-aliasing to improve um, the bake and uh, let's see how that looks. Right, so I lost my ID. I lost my ID there. <clears throat> Pretty sure of that. We can check it once it's baked, but I think I did lose it. Okay, so we have some baking errors. This is because of the UVs. I did not unwrap this properly, and that is and when that happens, you get some, these kind of baking errors. Right, and my ID map, if I go to ID here, it's all red. I lost my ID information, which is a bummer. And I guess I'll have to do it again. Or maybe not. I did call this IV pool by accident, uh, apparently. So if I do a go Z here and go into ZBrush, remember the polygroups that we created? 
So I still have those poly groups, which means that it's not going to be as hard to uh, give it a uh, redo the IV, uh, redo the ID map. So I'm going to do that using a uh, color, fill color, like I did in the other video. And in the next video, we're going to start texturing it. I'll bake it again. And, and that's it. I'll see you in the next video.